Hey YouTube, earlier this week I finished a project that I've wanted to build for quite a while. If you were a child of the 80s and 90s, you might remember seeing or unfortunately remember owning one of these infamously bad gaming devices. If you didn't have a Game Boy, a Game Gear, Atari Lynx, or an NEC Turbo Express, this is probably what you unwrapped during Christmas or on one of your birthdays. Well, this is one of those novelty Tiger handheld electronic games. Tiger produced a variety, a variety of these things, ranging from kitty games to revered titles such as Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, Ninja Gaiden, Castlevania, Double Dragon, etc. And uh, despite sharing the same title names as those beloved franchises, these Tiger handheld games pale in comparison to their console ports. With its rudimentary graphics, sound, and gameplay, these abhorrent little devices were forever marred. So with that said, I wanted to build something unique. Uh, I wanted to build something in this form factor, and I wanted to sort of redeem the Tiger handheld. So I built the Tiger Game.Pi. So what I did was I purchased a Sonic 2, and I installed a Raspberry Pi Zero. And um, I'll give you a quick look at the outside of the case itself, and then I'll boot it up. All right, so the buttons here, these were from a DS Lite. Uh, the plastic that surrounds the buttons are were also from a DS Lite case. These, all the buttons are from micro switches. All these buttons here operate, except for sound because I don't have it wired up to anything currently. As you can see here, this is the power button. I sort of messed up on the case here. Uh, however, I was able to fix it. This is the power input. I have L and R buttons on mine because I just couldn't find myself not being able to play Super Nintendo. Uh, the sound, the speaker is installed right here. On the old machine it was installed right here. As you can see I have a battery pack. I, I do have enough space inside to install a lithium ion battery pack but I could not find the, a good solution that I was happy with and uh, so I decided to go external for now which I'm quite happy with. Because I can always pull uh, another battery pack and put it on or, um, you know, so I'll just be able to play it that way for now. And uh, yet I do have enough space in it. I'll open it up and I'll show you where the Raspberry Pi is. It's basically, I'll just pull the battery pack off. Uh, it basically populates the space from about here to right around here. And from the side, I have almost all this space this entire bottom this back half uh, is empty it's not populated so at some point in the future I may be able to put a lithium ion in there and uh, currently I don't have any vents on it but I played Streets of Rage 2 I let it play on here for quite a while and the hottest it ever got was 57 degrees so the Raspberry Pi Zero is supposed to be good up to 80 degrees so if in the future I start having issues I'll just put some vents on the back here so I'll just go ahead and reattach the battery and I'll turn it on and the boot process takes uh, quite a while I'm not sure if it's because of my the SD card I have in it the SD card is not a class 10 or or above it's a it's a quite an old slower one so I'm not sure if it's that or if it's because of the RetroPie installation. So while it's installing, I'll, I'll just show you what it looks like compared to other systems. And here I have the Game Boy Advance SP. This is the 101 model. I have a DS Lite. I have a PSP. As you can see, the screen is quite large on the PSP compared to this. I have a 3DS. This is the XL, so the screen is huge. So there it goes, it's starting to boot up now. And <laughs> it gets really ridiculous when you compare it to <laughs> the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> All right, so it's booting up. The Raspberry Pi Zero does not have a audio amp in it, so what I did was I used a USB audio device and when it's when it's running you can actually see right here the red light that comes off the USB audio device 
And at first, uh, you know, I could have painted painted the inside or covered the LED. But what I like about it is, is whenever it transmit audio, it transmits audio, it blinks. And when it blinks, I know it's working. And when I turn the machine off, because you have to properly shut down the Raspberry Pi, otherwise you may corrupt your SD card. So whenever I shut it down through RetroPie, the USB sound card turns off, and then I know it's safe to go ahead and power it off. All right, so I'll go ahead and just show you some gameplay here. Start with Game Boy. Let's find something here. Ninja Gaiden. The screen is a Adafruit 2.2 TFT. It's a non-touch version. And the sound, this is the loudest that, this is the loudest that it will get. Uh, to me, I just, it doesn't have any sort of audio adjust controls. And to me that's fine because it's, it kind of just fits the style of the, what this machine is. And it's not an end all be all machine for me. So I was just sort of happy with it, with the audio output that it's at now. So it's not too loud and it's not too quiet. It's just sort of right in the middle. So I'm happy with it. All right. This game's actually really cool. I never played it before. Ah. I don't remember things blowing up so much in the reg regular Ninja Gaiden. Get a closer look. Let's see if it'll. Ah! There we go. The screen has a, um, if you, you have to sort of view it at an off angle, because if you don't, uh, your left and right eye will get two different images. Uh, it's because of the orientation of the, L, uh, of the LCD. If I were to turn it 90 degrees to the right, it would look perfect. But with the way I have it orientated, you have to sort of, you can kind of see it there. I have to sort of play it at a left angle, but it's just fine. I'm happy with it. And the LCD itself, I don't believe it's 30 frames. It'll do. I don't think it'll do 30 frames, but for me, for Game Boy games and uh, even the Super Nintendo games, it's, it's fine. And while even playing Sonic 2, to me it runs pretty well, so I'm happy with it. All right, well that's enough of Ninja Gaiden it all right let's see what we got here we got Game Boy Game Boy Advance Game Boy Color let's just back out Game Boy Game Gear Game Boy Advance Game Boy uh, see Game Boy Game Boy Advance Game Boy Color Master System Genesis Nintendo uh, Super Nintendo we'll play we'll try a Sonic game triple trouble Oh no, just gonna go ahead and launch it. With RetroPie, you're not supposed to press anything until the game launches. I have to press enter. I have my start button set up as enter. And the Game Gear version of Sonic demolishes the Tiger handheld version. Yay, Sonic. Oh, Tails, we'll pick Sonic. So I'm kind of sort of playing this through the screen of my phone, so... <laughs> I'll just blame it on that if I don't do so well. Oh, what is that? Oh, that's just a little... Oh, no! This is like one of the quirky games like uh, Super Mario Land where it's not, it's sort of not like the traditional Mario games. There we go. Come on. Hey. 
always have to duck, otherwise you may die. I don't know what that is. See what that is. I don't know what that did. And the uh, the buttons are not too stiff. They feel they feel quite nice. I had a sort of a a uh, a fair amount of buttons to choose from, and I just got the standard tactile switches. Okay, there's Sonic Trouble Trouble for the Game Gear on the TigerGame.com.py or did I say Game.py? I don't know. <laughs> Alright, let's try something else. Try something more advanced like Game Boy Advance. Okay, let's find a good one. Good one. Well, let's see what we have here. The buttons are sort of loud and clicky, but that's just fine. I won't play. Uh, I won't play this game. I'll just let. I'll just show you what it looks like on here. I have to find something with the L and R buttons. Well, maybe I should have just let the intro play. Just to sort of give you a look at the game. It's a very good game. So is the one on the the new 3DS game, Samus Returns. So this is probably going to take a while, so I'll just back out. Find another game that I can get into quicker. Let's see, <laughs> should I? <laughs> sure, we'll see. What the, we'll just go ahead and try this. Why not, in the spirit of Sonic 2. Hopefully this plays well. We just pick Sonic. It's a Sonic game. We have to pick Sonic. There's a speed up around here. So, well, I may be wrong. So this way. Should be going super fast to show you uh, how well the game plays. There we go. You can kind of give a test of screen and see how well the screen uh, responds to Sonic games with its blast processing. Uh, that's next. I'll show you one of those next. Uh oh. Jump right into that. Oh no! That's a sign. I must leave. Okay, we'll try something with. I could play Sonic on the Master System, but I've already played quite a few of those. I would like to play, or rather, show you one of the reasons why I had to have L and R buttons. Because when I f when I originally uh, finished this project, I did not. I did not put the L and R buttons on here because I, I like the way it looked. But I, I don't think I did a bad job at installing them. But I needed to um, have L and R buttons to play. No, not this. Even though this is a great game, not this game. Couldn't find myself not being able to play a game like... Focus. Where are you at? Killer Instinct. Because my 
combos rely on L and R buttons, so <laughs> had to have L and R buttons. Some games were playable without it, but um, I just needed to be able to play this game, so and some others. Let's see, let's go ahead, one player. I really wish I knew how to ROM hack. So now I would add all the arcade sounds into this version and the cutscenes uh, into the Super Nintendo version. Yeah. See if I can get a killer combo. There we go. That's why I need L and R buttons. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I had my fun there. Okay, and I will finish this demonstration off with No Nintendo. There we go. Of course, I have to play the one and the only Sonic 2 because Sonic 2 Comparing to what it looked like before, which I'll have to, I'll show you what it looked like before. The Tiger version of Sonic 2 looks like that. <laughs> With these monochrome type graphics. So, I much prefer this version. Gotta go fast. Uh oh, can I get in the special stage? No, I don't have enough rings. I'd like to uh, go into a special stage. See if I can do that. Looks like I can now. Just gotta find continuation point. Not getting hit. One right here? I think there's one right here. Could be wrong. Yes, I'm wrong. It's gotta be one up here somewhere. Oh no! You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pause this and I'm going to get to chemical stages on two. And then I'm going to show you chem the chemical plant. I take that back. I'm going to show you Dr. Robotnik first. Focus. Come on. This is it. Last hit. Oh, one more hit. Oh, two more hits. When you shoot, there you go. There you go. Yay! <laughs> and I got through Act Two. Okay, here goes. Here comes Chemical Plant Zone. So this this is a really fast board. It's gonna go fast. You gotta go fast. No, not backwards. Okay, here we go. That's 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 better. Oh, come on, come on. There we go.
See, back then, when it was Nintendo versus Sega, if you just had one console, you wouldn't have been able to play games like Sonic. So I had to have both. That's some pretty rapid movement, so. As I was saying earlier, this is uh, not a 60 or even maybe even a 30 uh, frame screen, but this game is, it, it runs great. All right. Well, that's the tiger dot game dot pie, or tiger game dot com dot pie, or tiger game dot pie. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and shut it down. Shut it down just like any retro pie installation. Just go down to quit. Quit. Oh, I can go to quit emulation station first. Yes, and I can see how hot it was. So let's see, it was running 51 degrees. You can see right there, CPU. See if it'll focus in on it. There you go, 51 degrees Celsius. All right, well, and I had previously typed some commands, so let's go shut down now. If you look here, this will turn off first. Now I know it's safe because the screen doesn't turn off. So after the red light turns off, or the USB audio device turns off, I can just turn it off. Well, what do you guys think? Do you think I redeemed the, the Tiger handheld device? Uh, if you have any questions about how I built it, or you just want to comment and say you liked it, or you didn't like it, feel free to comment, and uh, I'll see if I'll get back to you. All right, guys, take care.